Imagine if scientists discovered a secret ancient herb that would allow you to instantly lose more fat, build more muscle, have earth-shattering sex, become more confident, become more assertive, become more dominant. Instantly, all of this stuff. Would you take it? Well, if you asked this question of me a couple of years ago, I would have answered with the hell yes. But now, now I know better, all right? I know that anything that comes quick and easy will leave you the exact same way. Now, supplement companies may make it seem like uh, increasing your testosterone is a simple matter of taking a few pills every single day. But the truth of the matter is that if you actually want to increase your testosterone levels without using testosterone replacement therapy, which is a topic of a whole separate video altogether, then the only way to do so is by making lifestyle changes, all right? Now, this is Mo Salim coming at you from my balcony here in Medellin, Colombia. I'm the founder of TripleYourTea.com and basically, I'm going to tell you about the five lifestyle changes that I had made that naturally increased my total testosterone level from 564 to 902 nanograms per deciliter in just under four months, all right? Not only did this totally transform my body, but it completely altered my mindset as well. I went from being a victim of external circumstances to becoming a man that takes extreme responsibility for every single thing in my life, all right? Because the moment that you take responsibility for every single thing in your life is the moment you give yourself the power to change any single thing in your life, all right? So without further ado, we're gonna dive into the top five things that you must do before considering any testosterone booster supplements or anything like that. All right, so the first lifestyle change to naturally increase your testosterone levels is to get rid of the extra inches around your waist, all right? Now, uh, what I want you to do is grab the skin or the fat around your waist area and determine how many extra inches of it you have right now because the number one killer that I've seen in working with one-on-one -on -one clients, in working with all the people who reach out to me, the number one thing that will have the most significant impact on naturally increasing someone's testosterone levels is usually getting rid of the extra body fat that they're carrying around, all right? Now the problem with body fat is that it produces an enzyme called aromatase. And aromatase is an enzyme that converts testosterone into the female sex hormone, estrogen, all right? So if you're carrying extra inches around your waist, if you're carrying excess body fat, then what it's doing is literally making you more feminine, all right? So before you even consider any testosterone boosters or anything of the sort, it's very important for you to get lean, all right? now. There's a lot of different methods for determining how lean you are. For example, if you want to determine your body fat, you can like, there's some scales that they have now and they'll apparently tell you how much body fat you have. But the bottom line is that any mechanical measure that you use for measuring your body fat, even whether it's a DEXA scan, which is thought to be the most accurate method of measuring body fat, it will have some margin of error, all right? And this is why I make the recommendation to figure out how many inches you have to lose off your waist because the waist area is actually the most susceptible to actually increasing and decreasing with your body fat level. So just determine how many inches of fat you have around your waist and then determine how many inches you have to lose and then strive to get to the waist measurement that would be ideal according to your estimations, all right? But another recommendation I make is to achieve a body fat percentage below 15%. Now again, like I said, there's many different methods used for measuring body fat percentage, but uh, I'll link out to an image below which you can refer to, compare your own body to, and see where you currently lie on the scale of body fat percentages. And if you are above 15% body fat, then the number one thing you must do is consume at a calorie deficit, which is the golden rule of fat loss, so that you can slowly, sustainably, and predictably get to a body fat level below 15% so that your body can produce more testosterone and that less of it actually gets converted into estrogen. Now, the second thing you must do before even considering any testosterone boosters or any other supplements is to build relative strength. 
Now, you already know that testosterone is the primary hormonal driver of muscle growth, and the more muscle you have on your body, the more demand your body will have to actually produce testosterone, all right? Now, you might have heard the advice that in order to boost your testosterone, you need to do some heavy ass deadlifts, you need to do some heavy ass squats, and just lift very heavy, all right? But what I've found in working with one-on-one -on -one clients and seeing what the results they've had and stuff like that is that before even stepping foot in the gym, it's very important to build a solid foundation of relative strength before that, all right? And the meaning of relative strength is how strong you are relative to your body weight, all right? So before even setting foot in the gym, I always recommend that you set a solid foundation of relative strength in the three fundamental exercises or body weight exercises, all right? And those are the push-ups, the pull-ups, and the body weight squats. So before even setting foot in the gym, before even considering any testosterone boosters, I'd recommend that you reach a minimum relative strength standard because it's body weight exercises are relative to your body weight. So in these three exercises, all right? So before even going to the gym, I'd recommend you work your way to up to at least 50 push-ups in one set at least 15 pull-ups in one set, and at least 30 body weight squats in one set, all right? Now, setting this foundation in place before you go into the gym will ensure the proper development of your physique, rather than just going in, doing some heavy-ass squats, doing some heavy-ass deadlifts, and uh, it can result in the development of a disproportionate physique, and if you don't have that relative foundational strength in place, that can also lead to injuries later on. And once you have built that solid foundation of relative strength in the push-ups, pull-ups, and uh, body weight squats, then again, I'd still recommend that you use relative strength as a measure of the progress you've made. So for example, if you are 185 pounds, then your relative strength on the bench press, for example, if you can lift 225 pounds, would be one point something, whatever that is, all right? And that's something that we can talk about in another video, what strength standards you should shoot for in the gym. But what I've seen in guys who are trying to naturally increase their testosterone levels is that the relative strength in their body weight exercises is not where it should be. And usually in terms of getting their strength training on point is the highest leverage point for them. All right, and that brings us to the third thing you must do before considering any testosterone boosters, and that is to eat more healthy fats. Now, Mark Hyman, MD, a leader in the field of uh, natural medicine and just uh, in nutrition in general, wrote a book called Eat Fat, Get Thin. And in that book, he has a quote, and it goes, what's the single best thing you can do for your health, weight, and longevity? Eat more fats, all right? Now, we're still living in, tra in a culture where fats are kind of demonized, and that's actually a conspiracy that was thrown forward by the sugar industry back in the 70s, and it's carried on till today for some reason. But the bottom line is that the fats, the fat on your body is lowering your testosterone. But the fat that you eat does not create the fat on your body, all right? The fat on your body is created by excess caloric consumption and it doesn't matter whether that's coming from fats carbs or protein all right and actually sugars and uh, carbs and uh, yeah carbs basically which are sugars are messing with your insulin which is causing you to store more fat as well but that's a topic of a whole separate video but the bottom line is that healthy fats which i'll go over in a bit are not causing you to increase the fat stores on your body, all right? And the bottom line is, I mean, I guess there's two bottom lines at this point, but um, testosterone is literally manufactured from dietary cholesterol. So this means that if you're not eating enough healthy fats, then you're literally depriving of your body of the fundamental building blocks it needs to produce optimal levels of testosterone, all right? Now, what I mean by healthy fats is monounsaturated fats and saturated fats, all right? What you want to avoid are trans fats, which are basically trans fats and polyunsaturated fats are what you want to avoid, and saturated fats and monounsaturated fats are what you want to eat more of, all right? Now, there are multiple studies that have found that the amount of fat you eat correlates with your testosterone levels, and when those subjects are switched over to a lower fat diet, their testosterone levels take a dip as well. So, you need to eat more fats. Now, saturated fats usually come from animal sources, so stuff like meats, 
and uh, yeah, animal sources, meats, fish, tuna, fatty beef, all this type of stuff. Monounsaturated fats actually come from stuff like olive oil and avocados and other sources like that. And then trans fats and polyunsaturated fats are the two that you want to avoid. Trans fat usually come in like baked goods, potato chips, candy, chocolate, cookies, stuff like that. And polyunsaturated fats are actually probably the most dangerous because they're the most common. And they are basically, the most common source of them are included in stuff like um, vegetable oils all right now vegetable oils have the word vegetable in them but they are not healthy all right they're actually causing massive inflammation in your body and that inflammation is not only lowering your testosterone levels but it is causing a host of other health issues as well so ditch the fucking vegetable oils which include stuff like sunflower oil sunflower oil soybean oil canola oil all of these oils you have to ditch them because they are not doing your body any good and you have to make room for more healthy fats like avocados olive oil animal sources bacon even to some extent and such all right so don't be scared of fats you need them <laughs> you your body needs them to produce optimal levels of testosterone now that brings us to the fourth thing you must do before taking any testosterone boosters and that is to prioritize sleep all right now we live in a culture which glorifies the hustle the grind the quotes such as I can sleep when I'm dead or sleep is for the weak but the bottom line is that if your sleep is not on point your health will not be on point, all right? And also, when we go deeper into the area of natural testosterone optimization, the bulk of your body's testosterone is synthesized while you sleep, and a lack of sleep significantly inhibits its production, all right? Sleep is actually the most anabolic state that your body can enter, all right? It's basically the natural, number one natural anabolic steroid that exists. And if you're missing out on sleep, you're missing out on the number one state that your body actually has the high, produces the highest amounts of testosterone, all right? Now, you might say, oh, you know, I don't need that much sleep. I'm a high achiever. I can fucking get more done in less time, and uh, I don't need to recover that much. But if you consider the amount of sleep that some of the highest of high achievers in this world get, for example, I was reading that Roger Federer, who has been like, Crushing it in tennis, been the number one in the world. I don't know, like how many times. I think he's like for 52 weeks in a row. He strives to get 11 hours of sleep every single night. All right. Now he is an athlete, so that doesn't mean you should be trying to get 11 hours of sleep as well. Find what works for you. But if someone who's number one in the world at something is trying to get 11 hours of sleep, what makes you think that? Skipping out on sleep is going to help you reach your peak performance as well. All right. Also, LeBron James gets more than nine hours of sleep every single night. And just high achievers in general, athletes, I mean, obviously need more sleep than others. I personally strive to get about seven and a half to nine hours of sleep every single night. See what works for you. Monitor your energy levels. But the bottom line is that you have to make it a priority. All right. And if there's one thing. I told you to do that would significantly improve the quality of your sleep, significantly improve the quality of your energy the next day, that is to avoid electronics before going to bed, all right? Now these smartphones, TVs, laptops, they emit a blue light, which messes with our body's circadian rhythm, in turn, messing with our body's optimal hormonal secretions that would allow us to sleep optimally all right so prioritize sleep i'll link out to my article i'll link out to other videos that go deeper into all the tips you need to know in order to get this area of your life handled but just know that sleep has to be made a priority and it is not a luxury all right if you want to function as a peak performer if you want to be the man that you're capable of being and have the energy to fulfill your duties and responsibilities then you need to make sleep a priority all right and that brings us to the fifth thing you must do before taking any testosterone boosters and that is to practice abstinence so there's a belief in boxing that ejaculation saps aggression and abstinence builds it up all right so muhammad ali actually used to go six weeks without having sex before any one of his fights mike tyson apparently went five years without having sex when he was up and coming now obviously that's a bit far-fetched and i would highly recommend you don't go five years without having sex but the bottom line is that abstinence 
has been recommended to fighters since the time of the ancient Greeks, all right? It's not only modern boxers and modern fighters and MMA fighters who are abstaining before their fights, but it's also been since the time of the ancient Olympic Games, all right? Now, there's actually some research that backs this up. So, study, in one study, researchers brought in a bunch of subjects and measured their testosterone levels every single day, and these subjects were also instructed to abstain every single day for seven days days so day one they measured their testosterone levels day two day three day four day five day six and then on day seven what they found was that the average subject's testosterone level elevated by 145 percent all right that's a fucking crazy increase 145 percent just from seven days of abstinence now figure out whatever works for you in terms of uh you know, controlling your sexual appetite, I definitely recommend you check out my video below on the benefits of NoFap, which is a movement helping men to quit porn and masturbation. And if you're watching porn and masturbation, I highly recommend you check out this video because uh, it might be the most important video you watch in terms of increasing the quality of your life instantly, all right? If you quit porn and masturbation, you can allow yourself to feel the energy that your body would need to feel vital, all right? To feel that creative energy that allows you to express and bring your greatest gifts in greatest service to the world, all right? I won't dive too deep into how porn is affecting your brain and why you have to quit, so I recommend you check out my video on NoFap, but the bottom line is that abstinence ha is scientifically proven to boost your testosterone. So, before trying any testosterone boosters, before dropping money on supplements that don't work, I highly recommend that you take these five steps in naturally increasing your testosterone levels. Taking the steps, taking these exact steps, not only naturally increased my testosterone levels, but it allowed me to enter my personal power and purpose as a man, all right? It gave me the energy, whether you're talking mental, physical, emotional, or sexual, to fulfill my duties and obligations as a man so that I can bring my greatest gifts in greatest service to the world. If you follow these five steps, I'm sure that they can help you do the same. And if you want to dive deeper into some of this stuff, I highly recommend you check out my testosterone quiz linked out below. You answer a couple of questions. It tells you exactly where you are and exactly what steps you need to take moving forward. So go on tripleyourt.com forward slash quiz or click the link below in order to get access to this stuff. With all that being said, this has been Mo Salim and I'll see you soon.